Hi, I'm Blake within the Hyperloop. Today we're talking about SpaceX Hyperloop pod competition teams and real Hyperloop companies and what they've published on social media in the last couple days. So let's get to it. First, we want to talk about Hart. They're having an official uh, reveal, the grand reveal, on June 27th at 2 p.m. Central European Standard Time. We don't know a lot about this. We have this render from Instagram. Um, it looks like a, a pod container or some type of cargo container. And the heart team is really interesting. They've always had their pod levitating from the top. So it's hanging down. So this is really fascinating. We don't know much more about it. Um, but going to another Hyperloop team from uh, the Netherlands, and this one's a, sp a pod competition team. Um, at Delft Hyperloop, they released this really interesting video and let's just give it a quick look. They're building their pod for the SpaceX pod competition in June. Start Hyperloop, we're very excited. We start testing with the student team today in our test facility. And this is the first operational test facility in Europe. And in and this test facility, we can test full scale systems as hard, such as levitation, propulsion, guidance, and switching but of course also the vector environment which is why we're here today with the Delft Hyperloop team. So this is on the campus of TU Delft as you can see the skyscraper on the background and um, this tunnel was built by Hart which is the company we just saw in the previous Instagram post um, and they're, they are letting the Delft Hyperloop team uh, use their facilities to test out their pod and why is this important? Well let's listen. We're using the, the two behind us to vacuum test our pod and this will allow us to prepare for the SpaceX competition because this way uh, we can check if there's any faults in the vacuum either uh, through arcing or maybe temperature increase. And uh, I don't know if you were able to hear it but um, there was a lot of trouble with Hyperloop pod competition teams at SpaceX the last couple of years because the temperature inside the tube got really hot and also it's gone, uh, the tube is brought down in a vacuum so sometimes uh, temperatures can cross and it just all complicates stuff. So getting a lot of extra time on this um, test track is really helpful before they go out to uh, California. And they have finished assembling their Atlas II and uh, they're just now testing it out. So they're pretty far ahead compared to other teams, I think, um, which is really awesome. And good job, Hart Hyperloop and Delft Hyperloop for working really hard on this. Next, we're going to go to um, Hyperloop One. And it's really interesting. They're putting a lot of media out these days on about their test track and how much testing they've done um, and, and how they've had two years worth of data. So um, I don't know if it's a, uh, in response to these other Hyperloop teams that are now testing on their own test tracks, but we'll see. They have put out a lot of press, Hyperloop One, on you know a big reveal is coming soon and you know just around the corner and years away. So we'll see if maybe they uh, release something really interesting soon. And that brings me to my next topic. And sorry, it's uh, uh, I don't see it here, but um, there was a really interesting article. I'll try to find it and put it in the link about how Texas is working really hard. Um, and also Kansas and uh, different groups working with Hyperloop One to release feasibility studies. Going back to Hyperloop uh, teams, um, EFBPF uh, Loop is releasing their grand re reveal of their Hyperloop pod on May 29th. So that's really exciting, coming up soon. Um, oh, and this is uh, back to Hyperloop One. Um, it's really interesting. They've had the House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure look into Hyperloop being a form of mass transit in the United States. So they're really focusing on the legal um, aspects of Hyperloop and trying to get buy-in from different House committees on the Hill in DC. Uh, going back to Swiss Loop, this is kind of old two weeks ago, but they are putting together their test track and their I-beam um, for their pod to follow. It's really exciting and I just wanted to say that it's 120 meters long and that's fantastic. 
Um, other teams have also built small scale test tracks and so it's good to see the Swiss pod, Swiss loop uh, working hard on that. Zeleros, the Spanish Hyperloop pod team um, from Spain is hiring. They have a ton of open positions. This is from April 24th, but it was just really fascinating to see um, all, the, all the different kinds of positions that they're opening. So good job, Zeleros. Um, going back to Delft, Delft is also working on their own test track, but also um, working in the Heart Hyperloop um, tube and tunnel to test out um, low atmospheric conditions. Um, finally, this is a fun video from Hyperloop TT. Uh, we don't often see this kind of video, um, so let's just give it a, a watch. What is Hyperloop? Eva, do you know what is Hyperloop technology? A um, fast train that is run by magnetic levitation. How do you know about I think she aced that. Magnetic levitation. Because you always have meetings and you talk about it. <laughs> anyway, it's a really funny video. Um, they're working pretty hard on getting this technology put together. We haven't heard any updates from their uh, French test track um, that's full scale. Um, so we're really looking forward to learning more about that. Um, kind of interesting and a different Swiss pod, uh, another Swiss um, company that's uh, wanting to build Hyperloop. They released this render of their cargo pod uh, responsible, safe, efficient. Um, so it's really interesting. We don't know much about this. We reached out to them to see if they have any um, numbers on this pod. It looks like a you know, fairly large uh, container. Again, we don't have any ideas. They've only previously released renders of a uh, passenger um, pod, but this looks to be something that could just uh, kind of be that intermediary. We see other companies um, that are working on cargo. We might have a video uh, coming about that soon, but really fascinating. Good job, SwissPod, uh, for releasing that render. Um, this is kind of funny, but we see uh, Strathloop in Scotland already ha taking applications for the 2019-2020 season. Um, they're already working really hard, so if you're interested and in, in, you're in Scotland and go to a university in Scotland, check that out. Um, going back, another Scottish team, um, Hyper Ed, is having a really interesting um, discussion June 4th um, at the Edinburgh International Conference Centre. Um, about Hyperloop. It's free to the public. I would highly recommend you check that out um, and check out their their pod. Um, going back to another SpaceX pod competition team, um, Gator Loop is partnering um, with MIT and UT Austin to uh, work together to um, kind of build their pods together. We don't know what team is working on which subsystem, um, but we're really interested and glad that all these teams are working so well together and you know on social media we always see likes and retweets um, or at least likes on Twitter and likes on Instagram um, of these Hyperloop pod competition teams so that's great collaboration you don't often see that um, and that's kind of the end of it um, let us know what you think and if you have any questions um, or if you have an interesting video topic that you want to discuss or you want to um, talk um, and do an interview uh, with your team. Um, always happy to help and uh, stay in the loop.